Yeah, this is a huge, huge case, a big, big problem. This doesn't go away with money. This doesn't go away with money. This is a real problem for a billionaire. And you can start making the comparisons if you want. Um, but for years, there have been whispers. There have been rumors. There's been talk of in these wild, wild parties. But the question is, how wild were they? And where we are right now with this investigation into uh, trafficking, it's, it's, a, it's a major major problem and for someone of this magnitude someone who for decades has had power in the in, in the entertainment industry has had prestige and then you layer on top of it incredible success in business and you know billions of dollars okay just it's just been success after success after success. And um, money doesn't get you out of this. This is, money can have an impact for sure. And it will. And it makes everything look much different. But you can't, there's no settlement here. Okay, that's, that's the difference with what just happened at Diddy's Homes. And, and why it's happening and what's behind it is that this isn't a problem that you can fix with money alone. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to explain in just a second. I have to, I have to do something. Uh, one second. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Okay. Yeah, this is, um, and I'm looking at this picture right here. This, right, let me go back to that picture. Let me go back to that picture. I gotta find it one more time. We'll get back to that picture. Um, this picture is interesting, uh, but let's start with this one. And this one goes back, back in time. That's J Lo. That's J Lo. J Lo and, and and Diddy were together when he was Puffy or Puff Daddy, one or the other. And that was the first trial I covered on on Court TV. The first case well, it was Puff Daddy, Puffy, Sean Combs in New York, charged with uh, possession of a weapon. And there were three people in this um, vehicle, limo, whatever it was, SUV. It was the, the, the driver, Diddy, and J-Lo. There were three people in that car, and then there was one weapon that was tossed out, and those, the charges were that it was his. And one of the, the witnesses against him was the driver. And the driver saying it was Diddy's, Diddy's legal team, Johnny Cochran, Ben Brofman, powerful, saying, no, it was the driver's. And there was a third person in there who would know exactly whose weapon it was at the time. But the prosecution didn't call her because she was, I think she had just broken up after all this happened, but the prosecution is not going to call Diddy's girlfriend, J-Lo, because they don't know what she's going to say. And the defense didn't call her because maybe they knew what she would say under oath. But either way, he was found not guilty. And, and this... This case was fascinating because almost every witness in that case against Diddy had filed a separate civil lawsuit against him for whatever reason, whatever sort of theory. And it demolished their credibility, demolished their credibility, especially in front of the jury. And he was found not guilty in that case. Now, what's happening now seems to be connected to a civil case, which is a slight problem for investigators, a slight problem, but may not be the biggest, but, but could be overcome based upon what the evidence may or may not show in this case. But here's what you, you have to remember. And a lot of comments coming in already. Thank you so much. And we're working. We're going to get those moderators soon. 
very soon. Um, that case, small potatoes. Yes, there was some time behind bars that was that was connected to it if he was convicted. Um, but what we're talking about now is next level stuff, next level stuff. And what you have to remember, and this is important, this is coming out of the New York office. This is the same office that successfully prosecuted R. Kelly under a very similar circumstance, it seems. Now, it's just an investigation. No one's been arrested. No one's been charged with anything. But we do know that the raid took place on two of his homes, one down on Star Island in Miami, where I think he actually owns two homes next to each other, uh, and, and out in Los Angeles. And they're seizing electronics, hard drives. That's the difference. Okay, that's the difference between these cases because you're going to have potential witnesses here if this ever becomes something. Right? We're working on the presumption of innocence. I get it. Hasn't been charged. But in order to execute a raid like this, there's a certain level of proof and evidence that you need. So now the question is, whatever evidence was the basis for seizing these electronics, which likely came from or is connected to that civil lawsuit, because that civil lawsuit is, is alleging the trafficking as well. So, and it happens. It, it's, it wouldn't be the first time that some sort of civil suit resulted in a federal investigation. Um. The feds, you know, if they get tip information and then they act upon it and they vet that first level of the evidence to see, is this someone just going looking for a payday? Do they have some actual evidence? Do, is there something to this? Um, but they did move quickly from the filing of that lawsuit to where we are now. It's like less than a month. And he's, you know, he's, he's settled some suits. So those are kind of like, right, that's money. He gets sued, former girlfriend, made allegations, files it next day, settlement. You're not going to hear anything about it. There were other cases that were settled in the past as well. Similar to Michael Jackson. Um, but what's different is now this latest pending suit is still there. It did not settle quickly. It didn't go away. It is still out there. And now you're talking about criminal investigation and a criminal investigation does not get settled like a civil lawsuit a civil lawsuit is about being compensated for your damages two sides sit down they negotiate usually uh, the person being accused does not admit to anything the other person has a non-disclosure we're not going to talk about it but gets the uh, payment for the damages that they suffered. And that's how that works. That doesn't, doesn't work like that in a criminal case. When a criminal case settles, right, it's really a, some sort of plea agreement between the prosecuting agency and the accused. Now, again, he hasn't been accused of anything criminally. He's been accused of stuff civilly. And what he's accused of civilly could be pursued criminally and likely is, is the basis for all of this. So now let's get to the difference between what's happening now and what's happened in the past with that first case back at the turn of the century when he was dating J-Lo, right? The, 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 the witnesses who are testifying against him, all almost all of them had filed civil lawsuits against him. And some of it was like, were you really damaged by you know someone possessing... Or allegedly possessing what? No, no, and it 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 definitely reeked of money grab at the time, and the jury got it. The jury got it. This is different now. The the people making filing these civil lawsuits, who could be witnesses in a criminal case, even though they've agreed to remain silent about the settlement, if you're under subpoena, you've got to talk. You've got to talk. You've got to tell the story. So let's let's look at this now. 
the seizure, electronics and hard drives. That's the key to all of this. That's the key to all of this. Because if you, if you bring a case based just upon allegations by accusers who have also civilly sued Diddy, their credibility, they may be telling the truth, but their credibility in a courtroom is subject to attack and becomes problematic. Sometimes you overcome that with the number of accusers that you can bring into the courtroom. But what you really need, what you really need to make the case solid is digital images of some of this alleged conduct. And if that exists, that's game over stuff. Like you can try to explain it. Rob Lowe years ago somehow was able to, I don't know how that worked. That was a different time. But if there is digital evidence of this on top of accusers, even if they have filed civil lawsuits, uh, then you're getting somewhere. Now, this is this, the same agency, again, the feds out of New York, who, who put together the case against R. Kelly. And it was a very aggressive prosecution. They basically charged him under the RICO statutes, which, you know, originally meant to take down like crime syndicates, right? But they're going to apparently attempt to apply it to a situation like this, perhaps, like they did with R. Kelly. And, and R. Kelly and Diddy in totally different places at the time of all this. I mean, R. Kelly's career had, he didn't have that much money. He wasn't a successful businessman. He's a great singer and artist, but that was it. Diddy is much, much more. Much, much more. More sophisticated. His level of success, astronomical. So you're gonna need, you're gonna, you're gonna need something, I think, more than just accusers, unless you have enough of them. And you may have some that can corroborate other accusers or have accusers who have not filed civil lawsuits. Now, will all the witnesses cooperate in all of this? That's the other challenge. That's the other challenge. They may not remember or this, and if they've had a civil settlement, they may say, yeah, we settled that, but I, I really don't remember what happened. So that's, that's the other challenge. But this is, this is serious, this is for real. This level of a of a coordinated raid on two sides of the country at once. Now, his attorneys have come out and said this is ridiculous. I mean, all the military equipment or military-looking equipment that came in, and it was just, they're putting on a show. They're putting on a show, trying to make it into something that it isn't. And we don't know. And, and the question is, what level, how, how deep does all of this go? And I don't know if any of us know. I don't know if any of us know how, how deep it actually goes. Some, and, and if there are, and again, this is a big if, this is a big if, but if there are victims out there, some of them may not want to speak. You know, this is, to me, this is a, a combination of the situation potentially is a combination of R. Kelly and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, the wealth, the power, right? R. Kelly didn't have that. But R. Kelly was accused of kind of running this whole thing with a bunch of his cronies and his followers, his associates, and created this scheme to um, uh, uh, go after these, these victims. And that's What's alleged in the civil in the civil suit? Yeah, they're saying that this is this is what's going on, but using the power and the prestige, like Michael Jackson allegedly did, to entice people into his world. But then his world is structured in a way that it's almost like an organization. That's where this case could be going. 
Now, if all of this happens and then the feds do nothing, two things are going to happen. One, Diddy's going to come out and take a victory lap and then be really angry and talk about how his reputation's been attacked. That'll happen. The second thing that'll happen is the rampant conspiracy theorists who are going to then compare this to Epstein. Right? So I've compared this to Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, but there's going to be comparisons to Jeffrey Epstein too because of the, the level of wealth and the, and the allegations. Now, the allegations against Michael Jackson, like the terminology was different. Like right now, trafficking, trafficking, everyone's talking about that. It's sort of a buzzword. I think it's overused by law enforcement in a lot of instances. I think it's an abused word. I think when it's legitimate, these are important cases, but I also believe like law enforcement and people are watering down that word and the use of those statutes. So we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful because we don't want people to have the perception that, oh, it's not a big deal. Like if you make that allegation and you have that type of investigation, it's a big deal. A really big deal. That's why I don't want the term or the laws used in the wrong situations. In the wrong situations. So let's look at where this is and where this can go. All right, put on my, my prosecutor's hat. Prosecutors know what they're going up against. Okay, you're going up against what will be, if you bring charges, a real battle. So different than R. Kelly. R. Kelly had great attorneys, but he didn't have billions of dollars to fight the charges and to bring a defense. And I'll explain what that defense very well could look like if there are ever charges in this case involving Diddy. But as a prosecutor, you know, you know you're not going against some regular schmo, some regular alleged um, sex, uh, sexual abuser, criminal, etc. You're going against someone who has power, prestige, understands uh, the public, but also has access, access to a bottomless pit of money to defend himself. And what that means is, when you defend yourself, yeah, you get the legal team. I, that that part I get. It's really about the investigation. And it's the investigation into all the witnesses who will be brought against you. You can, th you, you can, you're going to put those assets to find out everything about everyone who is saying something about you that could be used against you in, in, inside that courtroom. I think prosecutors understand that, which is why you don't just bring this case quickly based upon witness testimony. You need something more because those witnesses, if they testify, will be put on trial during the trial because those investigators will dig, dig, and dig. And they'll find out everything you've done, everything you've said, everything that's inconsistent, everything you've done wrong, and it'll be a, a level of pressure that'll be put on those witnesses that when they get in the witness stand to testify in the trial for the government, the cross-examination will be extensive, it will be brutal, and, and tough to survive. Which gets me back to my first point about this case. The seizure of electronics, the, the seizure of potential images, videos, whatever is there, text messages, anything that can be brought into a courtroom and say, okay, you know, this doesn't lie. This does not lie. Because I don't think it's going to be a DNA case. 
I really don't. It could be. It could be, but I don't think it's going to be. It's going to be a case about the digital footprint and flipping. They've already arrested one person associated with Diddy. And people have referred to him as his alleged drug mule. I don't know anything about his background, but it's drug charges. They'll leverage that. And, and, and they did this in the R. Kelly case as well. You go after people connected to him, people in his circle. What do you get him on? What do you get him on? That's the way the feds work. Always. Always. And you got this guy jammed up on drugs. You can say, okay, well, with, with, with this, you're looking at, you know, 60 years. What do you got for us? And then it's not just using his testimony, but using, you try to get to the insiders to get the inside knowledge of what exactly was going on and where more evidence could be found. And then if they actually eyewitness something, yeah, they got to come into court and say what they saw, tell the jury what they heard. So that's happening too. To build this case, you're going to attack the associates of Diddy, get them under arrest, see what they have to say. First of all, see what you can charge them with, and you will charge them with the most that you can. So you, as, as the government, as the prosecution, have some leverage to get information from them. So that's where the lawyering comes into all of this, the back and forth. How loyal will this associate of Diddy's be? Now, obviously, he'll be subject to attack, right? The only reason you're saying this is because you got caught with these drugs and you're a bad person. And you're trying to come up with a way out of it. And you're just telling us what the government wants you to tell us. I get it. That happens. That's why you have to also get information, corroboration, or use those assets to figure out where other evidence may be or to figure out what was going on. And that's part of the investigation as well. Now, I don't know how large his circle of trusted um, people are. But they're going to be there. And are they doing anything wrong? And if you do bring some level of a like I said, RICO, RICO, which is like running a corrupt organization for criminal purposes, whatever those criminal purposes are, and here would be trafficking. So if that's the charges, there's going to be other people involved. So they all get rounded up. And, and they know you know where the target is. The target is for the top. So you get the people on the bottom. They're the ones that get the deals. Flip them. What can you tell us? Flip them. What can you tell us? That's that's how they're going to approach this. It's a much bigger case than, than R. Kelly. Much bigger. Potentially. Now, why, why, why now? And it, I don't think it's a coincidence that this civil suit that has similar allegations was just filed. And now prosecutors have to take a look at it. And that's what they're doing. And it's federal because you're talking about state to state, interstate uh, conduct. That's why the feds are in on it. R. Kelly had state charges and federal charges. He had both. All right. Let's see what folks are saying. This is interesting. This is fascinating. I've been talking about this for a while. Thank you, uh, uh, Dion. AI, right? So I've been talking about the potential impact that AI could have on our system of justice. We're going to reach a point, I don't know if it's in two years, five years, or 10 years, where digital um, video evidence, whether it's a still image, um, moving image, whatever it is, of, of, of any crime or conduct or being in a certain place at a certain time will be challenged. 
Is that AI? Is that real? Is that not real? And that's why uh, I don't think it's going to be a, an, an issue here because I, I don't think we're at that point. But the question is going to be, anytime now you bring in a video, I think one of the things you're going to have to establish through your experts is that it's legitimate. Like you can, from the video itself, from the, the ones and the zeros, the digital footprint it has, you'll be able to tell when and where it was created. And you should be able to tell the difference between something that's created through AI, the when and where versus legit. While they may look the same, the experts that are going to go in to take a look at the, the, the footprint of all of this will be able to figure out, or the thumbprint of this will be able to figure out where that image came from. But you're going to see that. And you may see it in this case. You may see it in this case. That's a great point. I... Everything done in one tired mama. Everything done in the dark will come to the light. Yeah. And was how long, like if this conduct was taking place, is, is it done in the open? Like when I say in the open, like at these parties or is it a much smaller group is it one-on-one -on -one? like how is this actually happening if it's happening if it's happening what is being alleged here this is where like are there are, are there potential witnesses who have known things but will never say anything not clear not clear and this is a great point carolina islands everyone knew weinstein but nobody said anything like people said things like they said it out loud they said it out loud but no one did it and 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 that conduct was you know it was it was stereotypical like hey you want to get the part here's what you do but it was gross and it was finally exposed but now that we've had this shift in society where we have less and less patience for this type of behavior um these cases have become easier to prosecute easier Still not easy, but easier. You saw what happened to that uh, 70s show star, uh, Masterson. Those were older charges that were brought, um, older um, allegations. Exit 74, great to see you. Raquel. I don't, he's not a fugitive because he's not wanted, right? I don't know if it's clear where he is right now, but it doesn't matter where he is. Now, his lawyer has said that there's been communications and there are no restrictions on his travel. That's what his lawyer is saying, uh, released a statement. So you're not a fugitive if you're, if you're not wanted, not charged uh, with anything. And he hasn't, charged with nothing. And, and what the only thing we've heard from the feds is that this is part of an ongoing investigation okay an ongoing investigation and they will give us very little information the feds will speak um through their papers and what i mean is if they if they present evidence in front of a grand jury a grand jury returns an indictment and it's a very detailed it's a lot of times these indictments are very detailed about the alleged conduct like in the r kelly case that's how they'll speak. And then they'll speak in court. Now, it's a federal case, it seems, at this point, or federal investigation. So if there are charges and there is a trial, we're not going to see it. Because our federal government, federal judges, the Supreme, it's really the Supreme Court of the United States has banned cameras uh, from inside courtrooms. Um, okay. Now, there's a difference here between federal and civil. When, when, when 
the case won't be sealed. Some of the names of the alleged victims, again, if there are charges brought, those names may be, you may use initials instead of the actual names in, in the public documents. Um, but once they get into court, generally the names are spoken out loud. Uh, it won't be sealed. The, the feds will seal a case if they're doing like some sort of, say you're investigating someone and it's a flight and it's a and there's a risk. There's some sort of danger or risk or some reason that you believe the target of the investigation might do something, whether it's flee or or take out witnesses or take some actions like that. Then you can have a sealed indictment and then unseal it once you get the person in custody. But those are rare. Those are rare. I don't believe anything here will be sealed. I think the names of, a, of accusers or alleged victims, um, if a case is brought, those names may be protected in the, in the public filings and the documents. Um, but you won't see it on television because of the because of the I'm taking a look at this. Uh, yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought. I was reading comments. I wanted to take a look at something here. I thought it was interesting because the comments are flying by so quick again. Again, my, my apologies. Uh, but keep the uh, meaningful discussion going in the chat. Don't make anything personal. Don't make anything about each other. Uh, but you can debate the case if you want or share information. Um, okay, this is interesting from Art Lovers. Sophistication, I worry. Well, it, 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 I guess it, it would depend upon your use. I would say compared to R. Kelly, more sophisticated than R. Kelly, number one, and the level of his business interests, much more sophisticated, you know, in all the um, different aspects of how he generated income and ran his businesses, much more sophisticated than R. Kelly. R. Kelly was, was a singer, an artist. Uh, did he more of a business person. Yes, he's an artist. He's a producer and all that. But um, hmm. I, I've heard mixed things on this. I think he may. Uh, thank you, Open Sidebar. I've heard mixed reporting here, uh, but some reporting that he's on spring break with family in the Bahamas. And there is extradition, extradition from the Bahamas. Uh, I've also heard that one of his private planes, I don't know if he has more than one, um, flew out of the country, but he wasn't on it. And the question is, where was the plane going? Like, was there anything else on the plane of interest? I don't know. Also heard that he allegedly spoke with the feds when he was in Miami getting ready to go on this alleged i keep saying alleged because you know i can't independently confirm this stuff um vacation in the bahamas with his family with the kids at spring break he's got i think seven children all you know wide range of ages he has some that are a little bit younger so i believe he's what i've heard he's in the bahamas there although that's not 100 percent clear one of his planes flew out of the country um, but he wasn't on it, and he did have communication. And, and his, his attorney said that they had communication. And now we get to talk, uh, thanks, Sam, about the Black Book. Um, so this is the other part of it, right? If there are these digital images, and do they involve people other than Diddy? What will happen with them? Now, what's interesting is in the civil lawsuit, there's now someone else being sued in that civil lawsuit by Lil Rod. And that's Cuba Gooding Jr. is now a party to that lawsuit as well. And what exactly is the relationship between these two? Was it just uh, a one-time alleged incident involving Cuba Gooding Jr. and P. Diddy? Not clear. Um, but that's the civil suit. That's the civil suit here.
that's that's another question, right? Like, what what is motivating this for prosecutors, right? And you hope, and you hope that the only motivation for prosecutors is seeking the truth in a case where they believe people have been um, victimized, right? That's what you hope. But like any other human or whatever, sometimes you have prosecutors that want headlines. So they go after a big fish. Sometimes they want to seize things, right? So there's a potential that they could seize the properties, the cash. Florida might be more difficult. Florida might be more difficult because of the um, the laws down there that protect someone's homestead. Uh, I'm not sure how that would necessarily work. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, we have seen prosecutors in the past that are motivated by things other than justice, and it's a shame. Uh, but not sure if that's the case here. I, I don't know. Jarmaine, thank you for the comment. And this is the problem, right? This is the problem that you have. If it's a civil suit, if it's a, if it's, you know, you're looking for a payday or you're, you know, there's some relationship, there's some level of consent and then things go south and then you're like looking for a payday. And those are normally the defenses in these cases. And, and, and I think that's, something that's been uh, talked about by his, his attorneys in some of these civil suits. It just gets different in criminal. It gets different in criminal because it's not one, it's not like a person is bringing the case against you. It's, it's the U S government. It's the people of the state uh, in a state case. So, the victims, while they have a voice, or the alleged victims have a voice, they are not the driving force. They're not in control of the case. Interesting. Um, well, he's had, like, when you are someone of that level and that level of wealth, you've had a lot of attorneys because just by being that wealthy and in business, you're going to get sued left and right. And there's going to be cases. So, um, Mark Garagos, I have heard him. He's been on television talking about it, that he's represented him. Uh, Sean Holly has represented him. She's another big time around in LA. Um, I, I think there will be a large team. Tom Mesero, I think he's he may have slowed down a little bit. He was in on the Masterson case initially, but then sort of backed out. So will he or won't he? I'm not sure, uh, but he's one of the best. Uh, I don't know if he's trying as many cases as he used to, but um, he's the only attorney, and he's the one with the long white hair that represented Michael Jackson um, that I saw live on the air get a judge to change his mind on the spot in a case, right? It wasn't the Michael Jackson case. It was another case, but the judge was, was about to rule. And a lot of times the judges in these motions, they have their decision written in front of them ahead of time. They hear the arguments and then they read their decision. In this case, Tom Mesro just mesmerized him so much that he actually, you could see him Xing out what he had written and ruled in favor of Mesro on the spot. So yeah, uh, He's one of the best, and I'm sure um, that's part of what you have to do. You're going to need a you're going to need a team of lawyers, and then you figure out who's going to take the lead. Um, but what you really are going to need, if 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 there are any charges, is the investigation, and it's the investigation of all the people that they're going to bring into court against you, which could include members of his own um, entourage, so to speak if some of them are charged and then take deals and we're, we're not there yet. This is step one, but you don't have that show of force and that level of, I mean, how many people were there doing these simultaneous searches, Miami and, and, and LA, unless you believe you've got something already. Yeah. And I don't think he's on the run. Uh, but I've heard spring break. 
a planned spring break, which coincided. And he spoke. He was in Miami because to go to the Bahamas, first you're going to go to Miami, then you're going to the Bahamas from there. So he wasn't in L.A. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> he had talent. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say to that. Okay, that's a, that's a question. Is he really a billionaire? It, it depends how you count the money. You know, what's the value of your companies? What's the value of the uh, of of what you uh, own in terms of, say, it's music. In the world of music, there are, you know you can own the publishing to songs and catalogs of music. And how do you value that, right? You know, is it liquid money? Is it assets? You know, I just think when you add it up and you look at the lifestyle that he is living and has lived for years and the number of um, ventures and business and, and ownership and things that he has um, and what money is worth these days, um, yeah. Uh, the answer is here, no, uh, Courthouse Cat. No. No, because uh, what they said is this is part of an ongoing investigation, right? So what it tells me is right now they have enough, enough evidence to warrant moving ahead. Not moving ahead to trial, but moving ahead in the investigation. Enough to convince a judge that, okay, we should be able to get a warrant and go inside his homes in two places okay that's where we are not probable cause for an arrest that happens when you've gathered enough of the specific evidence and i think what would happen here is you would present it to a, a grand jury and return a federal indictment and if you're in communication already with his legal team the way it should go down in situations like that is there should be um, communication and the Fed should ask, you know, say, OK, the indictment's coming down or we have the indictment. You want to set up a time to surrender yourself. Unfortunately, what we've seen in the past with our federal government is even with people that are in communication with the people who are investigating them, they still show up, you know, four o'clock in the morning and bang on doors, knock down doors, invite the media to, to record it and take you into custody that way. You know, and I think in cases like this and others, um, if you're in communication with those attorneys, like, all right, when are you going to surrender yourself? You do it peacefully. You figure out a way to get into the courthouse, not make a big commotion about it. Uh, keep everybody safe. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, when and if there is an arrest. Before there's an arrest, there has to be charges. And I don't think it's just going to be we're going to arrest him on charge. I think it's going to be a, a formal indictment. Yeah, well, well, Cuba has had his issues. He's had his issues, right? Um, he's now on the other end of that, that suit as well. I know we're getting them. We're getting the moderators. We're getting them. We're getting them. <laughs> Exit 165. Oh, well, that's way up north. That's way up north. That's Bergen County. Thank you, Danielle. Yes, TMZ gets their hands on everything. Um, they do a good job. Harvey does a good job gathering information. Um, right. So there's the conversation, and and. They, this is this is a, a crucial part, Susan, of the whole case. Is this right hand guy? There's no coincidence. It's not coincidental that he's taken into custody, right? This is part of the ongoing investigation. You you, you get someone who's close to the target, and you can get him on something that's directly related to what is the target of the investigation, or something that's completely unrelated. But well, you hit them with as much as you can, take them into custody, and then you got to work with them. What do you got for us? Look, you're looking at, hmm, that was a lot of drugs. Hmm, you got a little history here. You're looking at 40 years. You know, you're looking, you know, they could, that's what they do. 
And then he'll have an attorney and the attorney's going to speak with prosecutors and say, oh, what could we do here? Um, and then there's what's called a proffer. And this is really interesting in the federal system, what happens with the FBI. So it's kind of like what you see on law and order. And I think law and order bases it on this. Um, the suspect or the defendant will come in with his attorney, sit down in a room with the FBI and proffer information. Say, here's information that I have. Um, and it's not used at this point and is sort of a protected communication at this point. But oh, we've got information that we could do this, this, and this. We could pr provide that information to you. Um, then the feds will come back and say, well, if you give us information like that, we could do this for you. This for that. And they come to some sort of an agreement. That's the process. And that could be happening. Yes. 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 Yes, they can. They'll fight it. The other side will fight it. Everybody will fight it. But criminal case is a criminal case. Subpoena is a subpoena. Judge can order you. And then if you decline, you could be held in contempt. It's dicey, though. It's dicey because if it's an NDA, right, there's been a settlement, non-disclosure, et cetera. But if it's of criminal conduct, that's it's just not protected. It's not protected. Here's, here's the problem. Will that witness help you? Will that be a witness that cooperates with you? So it's real, you know, dicey little back and forth when we get into that world. There's a question. Who, does T, who is T.D. Jakes? Are folks talking about T.D. Jakes? T.D. Jakes is um, like a television preacher, I think, out of Texas. Super high profile, huge church, huge following. Um, but I think I think Diddy has spent time with him in his circle, um, both huge celebrities. And that's what well, you don't know, right? You see pictures of people together, like with this uh, uh, Prince Harry. Is he still a prince? He's not a prince anymore, is he? But anyway, the pictures of Diddy and Harry, like were they really like, were they really like this? Like it was, a, or, you know, at some point did they take a picture together because they're both super high profile, super rich, and they're at some event for something and they take a picture. You know, celebrities like that as much. Like you're, you know, a celebrity, hey, I'll take a picture with the prince or the prince like, wow, that's P. Diddy. You know what I mean? Let's take a picture together. What do we have in common? We're both like super famous and rich and it could just be a picture. So it could be the same, you know, it could be more TDJs, could be less. I've seen pictures of them uh, together. Oh, here's a great question. No, I did not. I did not know. Epstein, no idea. Um, um, did not know him. Okay. He's a bishop, TDJ. Bishop. I think they do call him bishop in his church. I don't, I don't, you know. Yeah, let's see. Well, this is, again, Kevin, this is a big part of, of what happened yesterday. Or it was yesterday or the day before. Um, but this is a big part of what happened. Seizing the electronics and arresting someone associated with Diddy. Like it's a classic move. Happens all the time. Right now, though, it's happening to an A-list celebrity with, I think, a billion dollars. Trevor not showing his case. Mm. Yeah, it's in, it's it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see um, what develops next. Um, but here's here's the problem right now. 
Now I'll, I'll put you in the shoes of, of Diddy. You're not you're not confident right now. This is not good. Like the civil cases, you can you can handle, you can deal with. Civil cases ultimately are about money. They're not about your freedom the rest of your life. But ask R. Kelly about this, right? Where is he? Where is he going to be the rest of his life? Where is he going to die? Behind bars. He is. Now, now think about, Diddy knows that. And I'm sure he's talking to everyone like, what are we looking at here? Well, if it's, if it's Rico, if it's, if it's trafficking, um, if there's more than one victim, everything piles on top of each other. It all just keeps piling up. And you're in the federal system. In the federal system, you do more time than the state system. The federal system is much less forgiving. It's more difficult to get out on parole. You do more time and the statutes are much more strict in terms of how much time you're going to do. There's a lot less leeway and flexibility for judges. It's really driven by, by the charges. Um, and, and that's the problem here. And that's the problem for him. You're looking at real time. You're looking at a massive investigation, which was evident by the massive show of force in two cities at once. And this is all being run out of New York. Who knows the playbook here? Who knows the legal playbook for how do we take one of these cases that's a little messy with civil allegations and how do we turn it into a rock solid criminal indictment? And you may very well hear the words RICO. RICO is the catch all. If you're the one on top and you're like running this organization, you're responsible for everything that everybody else is doing. So if other people are grooming, if other people are finding, if other people are engaging in this conduct under RICO, it all kind of gets swooped together because it's one, it's the whole purpose of your, your enterprise is, is, is this criminal conduct. And that's, you know, how they went after the mob. And it all started. Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani was the one. Broke up uh, the mob to a certain extent. Brought them to their knees in New York years ago. And it was, it was these new RICO statutes. And now they're being used in many different ways that were never envisioned by um, the lawmakers when they created them. But prosecutors get very creative in, in all of this. So, all right, I'm going to talk more about this tonight, 8 o'clock on my show on Court TV. Um, 8 o'clock tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring in R. Kelly's attorney. R. Kelly's attorney is going to join me. So we get a firsthand look at what this all means and the insight and, and um, what are they doing now? What are they gathering? What are they going to need? Can it be defended? How is this all going to break down? Uh, we'll get into all of that. Plus we'll bring you the latest updates as all this is taking place. Um, and then we'll talk about the other true crime stories uh, of the night in the second hour, including uh, the doomsday couple. Um, we're keeping an eye on Madeline Soto. Is anything happening there? So all the latest every night from eight to 10, it's live. It's unscripted. Um, it's on court TV. If you don't have court TV or you don't know where to find it, you can go to courttv.com. And they have a little tab there, where to find us. And you plug in your zip code or whatever, your area code, zip code, and you'll figure out where you can watch Court TV. But uh, I'm live every night from 8 to 10 on Court TV. That's why I can be here on YouTube uh, during the day, talking about some of these stories, talking to you. Uh, great comments today. Really appreciate it. Um, good conversation. We're going to get those moderators very close. Very close to getting them. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, this, this story could be huge. And I think it'll be huge either way if something happens or if nothing happens. You know, if there are charges or no charges, either way, the story remains big because of where we are right now. Okay. Google has them at 900 million. 
<laughs> give or take. But with inflation, it's probably a billion. It's probably two billion with inflation, right? All right. Thank you so much for watching. We hit, I think, close to three thousand uh, on Facebook, YouTube, X, and Twitch all at once. And we'll be back here. We'll be back here uh, when I have more to report, obviously. Uh, but I'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock on Core TV. Have a great day. And please don't forget to hug the kid.